Well, welcome back to the grid, as they say. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm intending to make today. And I've, I've done this so many times now. Uh, I have a working project right here in Unreal Engine. This is based on the third person template. Let's see if I, my controller connects here. Does it? Does it just? There we go. Perfect. So Unreal Engine, I've replaced the regular 3D guy, the regular Unreal guy with a Genesis 8 character. And it appears I can now take my, I mean, you know, uh, never mind the poles, that's made for like a uh, burly kind of, you know, guy. But um, if I go and do that, it look at that, it works. That is quite funny. So this is a custom character, a Genesis 8 character, and I've made it possible that she can go and walk around in Unreal. Isn't that exciting? And what's more important, what's even funnier is that I can... I can, I mean, this is just the demo level, but I can literally use one of the city levels or the, the meadow level that's free for the month of July and put her into that and have her walk around that level. And then we can add the sky that we had a look at last time, which I did work out, by the way. I did work out how to make that sky appear in the city scene. And that is very cool. Ha ha ha. So yes, male and female both work. I haven't done anything with the animation. So this, the pose and the animations are exactly the same for this guy, for the woman, and for Unreal Guy. So I can also change him back into Unreal Guy, of course. So I'll show you how to do this from scratch in this project. This is the Dash Studio scene with the character that I've just shown you. Oops. And this is the launcher of Unreal Engine. So what I've got open right now is just uh, Dash Studio, and and that is it. This is just my other, this is my streaming PC, and the thing that we can, let's go and remove all those tabs. The thing that I'm going to use to make all this happen is on the Unreal Marketplace. I'll just show you the product quickly. It's called Das to Unreal, and it has it's made by David Vod Vodhanel Vodhanel Vodhanel. Don't know how you pronounce him. Actually, pronounce his name. It's called Das to Unreal. I suppose if you just look for Das, it'll probably come up. There, Das to Unreal. This is the plugin, and it's forty dollars, I believe, on the marketplace, but if you've I don't know if you've heard of these rumors there are exciting rumors on our discord server have a look in the DAS channel Mark brought this to my attention uh, as of this morning's newsletter from DAS we now get these bridges to Blender and Maya and Cinema 4D free from DAS so that they can be uh, just installed in DAS Studio and then you can export content and use it in other engines which is exciting Unreal Engine is not quite part of it but According to a trusted source, <laughs> github.com forward slash DAS 3D, it appears that this is DAS's... Um, uh, oh, Tykin, thank you so much for dropping by and thank you for following. That's really nice. Tykin and I are mixer buddies, so very, very cool to see you on Twitch. Awesome, man. <laughs> very cool. So... Um, github.com forward slash das 3d those are das repositories and one of them is das to unreal <gasps> dun, 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 dun. there's also the cinema 4d one and the blender one so it looks like these are currently empty but uh, so they're saying you know coming soon manual installation instructions and code coming soon for now go to das.com das 3d.com and grab the bridges for free but check it out if you look at the license and i don't know how true this is this is seriously early days but if you look at the license this is the apache license if you know anything about software this means they could go open source with these bridges so we we don't know yet it's it's all up in the air it's just a bit of a discussion that we're having right now a bit of a philosoph philosophical thing that's going on so it could well be that the source code for the bridges not for das studio but for the bridges might well be open source and one of the other repositories that we find here is das to unreal and when i looked at this this morning so i bought the das to unreal from the um Unreal Marketplace. But if we look in here, we have the same license, which is also the Apache license, but the committer on this end was indeed uh, David Vodhanel. So that is the author of this plugin that I'm using. So I don't know if that's going to come to the 
SaaS marketplace, if it's going to be a free bridge, if it's going to be a paid for product. I really don't know yet. Well, nobody knows yet, but the source code is here already. David has committed that uh, on the official DAS repository. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. So for now, the, the proper way to get it is to get it from the Unreal Engine marketplace uh, for 40 bucks. So yes, that's the one. Indeed. That is what I saw as well. They've, pro they've published videos on how to use them and uh, apparently there'll be soon be more. So I think that's a great move into the right direction because I bet so many people wanted to use the DAS content in other engines. There have been so many workarounds, but it would just be awesome if we have a one-click solution. So DAS to Unreal might well be the next bridge coming to this thing. I bet there's a lot of, a lot of people are trying to do this. And it even says this project is open source. Well, look at that. Cool. That's interesting because I don't know what that means for this project here, for DAS to Unreal. I don't know if that's... Uh, it looks like it's going to become open source. So I'm happy to support David. I don't want to refund David in case you're watching this. <laughs> I'm very happy to support you on this journey. Um, currently, the integration with the Unreal Engine is that you have to get it from there uh, and head over to library. And under your vault down here you can search for it das and there it is install to engine comes up and uh, i can't do it anymore because it says you cannot install this plugin as it is already installed to all compatible engines but this is how you do this how do you get the code into the thing you do just install this to the engine and then you can go and launch your engine i've just updated mine to 4.25.2 You know, Rod, I'm a little bit concerned about that as well. It is the pace at which these things are progressing. It's just unbelievable. I'm going to go and create a brand new games project here. I have several here already, but I'm going to do this all from scratch. So I'm going to use games project, hit next. And then I'm going to use the third person template here. And that'll come up with Unreal Guy in this, this small level here. And I'll just go and create that. Perhaps this one, I'm going to call that DAS6 because you know that's a really good name here i'm sure i'm going to remember what that is next week <laughs> these are all just test projects so i'm happy to you know see what happens there so um this comes up just uh, as i showed you before i could now go and play the scene and run around with the gray unreal guy but we've also got this message here that says new plugins are available and i can click on manage plugins that'll bring me to the basically like the enable any kind of plugins that are that are here it's currently not enabled if you dismiss that and you think oh dang i pressed the wrong button how do i get to there you can head over to edit plugins and that brings up the same dialogue what we need to do is enable the plugin so it has to be enabled on a per project basis even though the code is installed it's not enabled on a per project basis and when i do that i have to sadly restart this thing and you know no problem it's not going to it's not going to restart the engine as such it's just going to reload the project so it's going to go a little bit faster which is nice julia is doing very well thank you joe thank you for asking yes she's doing great she has a meeting in the other room she's still working from home full time which is awesome for both of us and i'm supposed to go back to work on the 1st of august well technically until the 31st of july that's when my doctor certificate kind of runs out but i'm not gonna go back to work i'm waiting to hear back from them to extend me for a little bit longer but i can't see myself going back to work not in these crazy trying times i mean florida is a hot spot is the word google used a hot spot the epicenter of covid right now so uh, mayors are up in arms about it and they don't really want for that to to continue and i don't know if we're going to close businesses down again it's, it's kind of cause and effect. I mean, you know, curve was literally going down. Great, let's open everything up again. Curve is going up. Hmm, down, what are we going to do now? Well, you know, politics, hey? <sighs> DAS to Unreal is enabled, and that's awesome. I can close this down. There is, um, there's now this little icon up here that we don't really need to do anything with unless you install this thing for the first time. If you do that, it'll run a script. If you click it, there's this thing called install DAS Studio plugin. If you click that for the first time, it'll do this and nothing else will happen and it'll just come back. But because my thing is already installed, I'm getting this little error dialogue here, which I think is a generic error message. And it just says, uh, please copy 
das to unreal.dll manually from this path into the plugins directory. If I browse there now, it, I'll see that it's it already exists, so I don't I can ignore that. And this this error message only doesn't really come up when the process is successful. So you know I'm going to ignore that. And all I have to do is enable my das to unreal plugin in the engine, and then I'm kind of good to go here. I'm going to do one other thing, which is um, disable this and that, just so that we get the default look back of the little content directory. So currently I have a geometry, my mannequin, and I've got my third person blueprint here. So just as vanilla as it comes. So I'll hop over to my DAS studio scene, and I'm not going to start with the woman. I'm going to start with the man. I've just saved my Genesis 8 male uh, basic character, just basic male character with shorts, and turned that into a DAS scene. And here he is, that's him basic guy uh, so he's wearing shorts and it's it he doesn't have any custom morphs on him whatsoever once this plugin is installed once this little icon has been pressed in the in, in unreal engine it'll copy some files over to the das directory and we can get those under edit sent to unreal this is a little bit different to the other bridges so i don't know if this is going to be the final destination now that we might see this plugin officially in the das store all the other bridges are under file so file sent to bryce hexagon zbrush and all the other things i'm pretty sure that das to unreal is probably going to make its way here eventually but for now it's under edit sent to unreal and that's what i need to press at which point um, the plugin is going to go and export everything as fbx's and textures and all that and then the uh, unreal engine will just go and bring that all in automatically one thing of note make sure that the top character is actually selected when you do that i've had instances where i had accidentally selected the last item of clothing and then hit the edit export to unreal engine button and then what happens is that the only the boxes are visible so i think the whole mesh has been exported but only or maybe it hasn't i don't know uh, only the boxer shorts are visible so you've got like this invisible pair of boxer shorts wandering around not recommended unless that's the intended effect so click on the top character here and then head over to edit sent to unreal or file sent to unreal wherever that's going to end up in Command zero one. Hello, hello. I'm glad. I'm so glad to see you. Very nice to see you. Awesome. <laughs> I did design the guy. No, actually, I didn't design the guy. I just uh, this is just the basic model that comes the the Genesis eight male free character. You can morph him into like you know uh, muscular, and you can give him different skin textures and all kinds of things. But no, this is just the basic guy that that comes out. Up here, the export dialog tells you that the asset name is going to be g8 underscore mail and it gets this from the file name of my scene so that's where that is going to come in if you save the file as something else this is going to be the default name you can rename that of course i'm going to leave it as that there's a few other options in here but i'm going to leave everything at the default so um you know that's that's all all defaults here all defaults i'm going to hit accept and that should start the export port content export procedure like a box hello hello so good to see you all this is so nice command zero one tyken is here like a box we like the mixer family we're like the mixer refugees i had one guy i don't know if you've watched card shark on mixer i used to watch him every once in a while and he calls his move to twitch mixer season three and i thought that was just so fantastic yeah so this is mixer season three welcome all welcome all <laughs> I am having a very good day, yes, except for the sad news, of course, about the mixture closure. There's a video on my Twitch channel, the final moments. Ah, oh, it was so nice. They put little messages out. They put confetti over the website. It was really, really nice how the way they handled that. But at literally 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they pulled the plug. So, yeah, that's one of those things. <laughs> no, please don't. Command 01 is officially break time for you. <laughs> no work. I let me work for you. <laughs> let me do the work. I feel like I've not been doing any work today, but I actually have. It's just sometimes some days you feel like, you know, you haven't you haven't achieved much. And today is one of those days I feel like I haven't achieved much. A lot has gone into the brain, but I feel like I've got very little to show for it. Maybe I can show you now. 
This little dialog box always comes up. It just says no smoothing group information was found in this FBX scene. We'll just go say yeah, yeah, whatever, and just, you know, <laughs> close that out. So at the bottom now, we have a new directory here called das to Unreal. And in it, we have the G8 mail folder in which we have the materials and the textures folder. So one thing that's already selected is my is the thing with the pink underscore here, the, the icon with the pink underscore, and that's the skeletal mesh for my character. We also have the animation sequence and we also have the um, physics. We're going to uh, ignore those. This thing is auto selected and all we need to do is double click it to do something meaningful with it. So let's go and do that. That'll open another relatively scary window, which we can dock up here. Gives our, gives our mind a little bit of a rest. And this is now essentially just the, uh, the character mesh. And the, um, yeah, just, so just, just the mesh, no rigging. Rigging is up here under skeleton. Important to know that we're on two different tabs. This greatly confused me when I did my testing here, because when I go into skeleton, uh, there is a view up here that might come up like this. If you're in the skeleton view and you have the skeleton tree showing, then the skeleton tab and the mesh tab almost look identical. So the windows are, there are subtle differences, but I was accidentally on the mesh tab and I was thinking, where's this thing that we need next, which is the retarget manager. And I just couldn't find it. And the thing is, it is actually here, but only when you select the skeleton. Oh, wow. Background check information. I like it. Do you know? Yeah, me too. Actually, let's all have coffee. I've got some. I've got some here. It's important to have some coffee. Also, if you do need the official WP Guru coffee mug, by the way, um, don't hesitate to type exclamation mark mugs in the chat, and you'll get yourself one of these. It's awesome. <laughs> Higher tier Patreon supporters can also get one. No worries. But yes, let's have coffee. Because this next bit is a little bit uh, tough, but w once you've done it like 20 times or so, it'll grow on you. <laughs> but that's how often you have to do it. So with this skeleton selected, head over to the retarget manager. That might or might not be open already. Mine usually isn't open. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it isn't. I really don't know how it works. But uh, yeah, retarget manager. And with that, we need to now give this guy a pose that matches the pose of the Unreal guy better. So the Unreal guy is rigged and he's got he's rigged for animations, but the rigging structure is a little bit different than on our Genesis guy. So Unreal has this amazing option to basically line up two characters and just no matter what the bones are called, you can retarget a rig or an animation from one character that's fully functioning to one that currently isn't functioning so you can retarget animations that way for those for that they have to have a humanoid rig so on the left hand side so the select rig humanoid is already selected but what isn't lining up is the pose that the unreal guy has so he has slightly curled fingers his uh, shoulder positions are a little bit different he also has an a pose but not quite the same so in order to make that happen we need to go down to the bottom here and say modify pose and that comes up with another little confusing box here it has a top one that says none and it has a bottom one that says none selected so we need to take this top one and pick a pose that David has kindly included with the plugin. Sadly, it doesn't show up by default. So there's, there's one that should be a pose asset that should be uh, should appear here, but sadly it doesn't show up because for it to show up, we need to head over here to view options and then make sure that both show engine content and show plugin content is enabled. That's by default unticked. So we have to go tick that and view options, show plugin content as well. And now we can see that this pose Genesis 8 to humanoid pose pose asset is coming up. But if either one of them is disabled, it doesn't, know, doesn't matter which one it is, it, it, that pose doesn't show up. Greatly confusing. So I hope that's going to be changed at one point. But yeah, if you enable both of them, you can select that pose. And once you do that, there's a pose in this package that you can then select. There could be multiple. There's only one here that's called pose underscore one. And we can go and say import. And when we do that, you can see that the guy has in fact changed his um, his pose a bit. You can toggle that with, with hide and show pose. And you can see what the exact difference is there. We'll leave it on and save him. And that is that.
do you know i can so see that sometimes applications command zero one really put me off when i when i can't figure out the interface unity is even worse unity i i really tried to make head or tail of it i couldn't it's, it's not it's not going in my brain unreal is complicated but it does follow a pattern so it's kind of and there, there's tons of tool tips there I can see that visually it's it might be a bit off-putting but it's such a complex application as well it's just you know it's one of those things i like the auto saving thing by the way that if you're in the middle of something and you go no don't auto save for three minutes i really need to get this done you can just go and cancel out of that and let it auto save later that's kind of nice so we've done that we've we've uh, given him the pose that he needs now we need to go over and do something similar to unreal guy so unreal guy there's this uh, all this other content that's now showing up here that isn't really something we need to work with but that is what these two options do in the view options that's why that is getting a little bit complicated so anything in a larger font uh, please ignore we're going to switch that off in a minute <laughs> it's easy to do uh, under mannequin we have a uh, character and we have mesh so we need to do something similar with the guy here with the unreal guy we can click this or we can just go click directly on his skeleton i'll go bring that up and all we need to do here this unreal guy here in his pose that now looks like the like the um, the pose that we've just applied on our other guy all we need to do here apparently is to select his rig and just make sure it's set to select humanoid rig and that's all save it we can close it. I can also leave it open. Doesn't really matter. And um, that's it. So now both meshes and both skeletons just visually line up, you know, so visually. But the animations still need to be retargeted. So anything that is applied on Unreal Guy that has to do with jumping, running, uh, standing idle there with his, you know, with his arms and all, that needs to be retargeted so that it can be used on the Genesis character. And we do that also in this uh, folder here under our character under animations actually there's this thing here third person anim bp and that is this thing that has a, a kind of a dark yellow slash orange underscore and there's also one with a lighter yellow that's not what we want that's the blend space there's the actual animations which are green that are those ones over here so this is literally the the animation loops call them any blocks if you will this is just the the animation loops and the blend space brings them all together so depending on which direction we point the joystick in that is which animation gets played and how strong that's what a blend space does it brings all these animation blocks together so third person anim bp uh, don't double click it we right click it this time and have this option here retarget anim blueprints duplicate anim blueprints and retarget if your brain isn't smoking yet it's time for it to do that it all makes perfect sense once we open that we have we now have uh, skeletons here to choose from that match the one that we're seeing in the source so target is not showing up it doesn't really matter but what we need to do is pick this one here the genesis 8 base skeleton david includes two uh, this one's only just shown up today i don't know what that is the ik skeleton he includes two skeletons one for genesis 8 one for genesis 3 that's quite nice i think um previous generations of genesis are not supported right now so we need to select this one because ours is a genesis 8 character oh now my thing is showing up here that's awesome and technically all i need to do is hit retarget but that will copy the same animation blueprint that i need to select with the same name so we have two identical ones one's wrong one's right one will work one won't and it's difficult to know which one so i prefer to head over to the prefix section here and just prefix the asset that unreal is now going to copy in the background with something that i can remember so in my in my case that's going to be g8 perhaps underscore and so the old asset is going to be whatever file name the new asset is going to be g8 whatever file name I can also change the folder in which that happens. I'm going to leave it where it is and just hit retarget. And then we can see that we now have new animation blueprints and animation sequences that are now retargeted to our guy, which is awesome. So we're nearly at the end. And now comes the fun part, namely adjusting our base character 
to become the Genesis 8 guy to run around in our in our thing. I think I'm going to do uh, one thing first. I might just go and switch off the the view options here, show engine content and show plugin content, just so that this this the whole this file hierarchy gets a little bit whittled down here. And so um, what we need to do is head over to, there's another way to do this. I prefer this way, uh, head over to third person blueprint in blueprints. I've got my third person character that defines what the player looks like in the scene here. I can click this guy directly and, and adjust his properties, but I don't really like uh, like doing that. I like to adjust the, the, uh, the actual kind of, you know, game object here. Double click to open this. Don't get confused. Head over to viewport. <sighs> Much, much nicer. This is the, the kind of the game logic that what happens when you do whatever and what happens when he collides with stuff. And we don't worry about that right now. We go into the viewport and select. So there's the camera behind the character. That's not how that's set up. So we select the guy inside, not the capsule. Very important. You can select the capsule, but we need to actually select the mesh of the guy on the inside and give him a new skeletal mesh, which is down here. So SK Mannequin is the is the mesh of Unreal Guy. We're going to change that to G8 skeletal mesh. And that kind of works. We see Genesis 8 Guy, but he's not animating yet. So for that to happen, we need to give him an animation class up here. And that is set to none, which is why he's just in his regular pose. And if we set this to my thing that I've renamed, which is G8 third person anim BP, that should do the trick. Does it? Yes, it does. Look at that. Now he's got the uh, stance pose going there. Had I not renamed that, it would have been, uh, we would have just chosen third person anim BP, but there would have been literally two identical files with the same name in different folders, but in the list they would just show up as third person anim BP, and we wouldn't have known which one to pick. So one would have worked, one would have not worked. So hence, I like to rename that to, to make sure I, I pick the right one. That is that. For, for this whole project to come to an end at one point, we need to compile the blueprint. Doesn't work without it. It's dirty, it says. Needs to be compiled. Let's do that. Let's save it. And then if we go back to our third person map, we can see that Genesis 8 guy is now in the position of Unreal guy, which is super awesome. So we go and play this thing now. Hit F11, grab my Xbox controller. That's a nice sound. And then we can go and run around with Unreal Guy, with uh, Genesis 8 Guy in the level. Round of applause. Whoops. Round of applause. Genesis 8 Guy is running around in Unreal Engine, which is awesome. Woo hoo. Ha ha ha. It took me a week to achieve this. Relatively simple feat. <laughs> Unbelievable. I know, Joe, we haven't met each other. We haven't seen each other in a while. Let me just go catch up on chat here. We're all getting coffee. That's good. <laughs> yes, I haven't seen you in a while, Joe. Absolutely nice to catch up again. I hope I'll be on Twitch a little bit more often now. I try to split my time between game streams on YouTube at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. I haven't figured out a schedule yet, but 10 o'clock it'll be at one point, maybe coming up again later this week, early next week, something like that, and do a little bit of uh, 3D chilled out streams like these on Twitch. That's how I'd like to, that's how I've got envisioned the, the, the kind of the concept for the various channels. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> do you know, I think so too, <clears throat> Command Zero One. I think so too. It's It's almost like, it's it's important to to do this. I mean, to a certain extent, this is like playing a video game. Us battling through menu after menu is one of those things. And it reminds me, very much reminds me of us playing an adventure game together where you're stuck in this level and you think, well, how am I going to, how am I going to, where, how am I going to get out of here? And the whole community chips in and have you tried this? Have you tried that? And you go, oh, that's nice. I've not, I've not thought of that. Closer, close-up look on our guy here. I have to kind of, you know, you can you can do this differently, but while I've got him here, um, skin textures don't look half bad, I must say. And this is with default lighting and everything, so this is literally just the the thing that comes in. I'll show you something else that's quite fascinating, and that is how uh, we can literally now that we've hooked all this up for Genesis Eight, I can now bring in a second character 
just like I did with this guy, but without any anything other than just selecting the guy. I don't have to retarget the skeleton again. I can just bring in another character. And if the animations match, it might not look perfect, but it'll it'll work. So let me show you that. I'll go back to this and go and uh, stop this. Let's go back to Das Studio and load up my previous scene, which is the one with with the girl here. So this is Genesis 8 female, uh, just scene number three. I don't want to save him. <laughs> and I, I hear you what you're saying about the about the menus there, Command Zero One. It's yeah. It's, you gotta yeah it's it's difficult i think every interface has its has its quirks i'm kind of i am i'm just i'm just glad that everyone's gone with with oh, well like since 10 15 years now it, it kind of started with the dark interfaces in photoshop didn't it everyone's using kind of a medium to dark gray as the background color not like a bright glowing light gray or something or like an off green or whatever that is just you know those colors i think this is very calming for our eyes that we have the medium gray background and then whatever we're doing is kind of standing out and then we have contrast that we can set off either way but i remember when interfaces used to be either white or completely black and that's also that's just even you, you've got to have that middle ground there <laughs> Yeah, so I'm kind of glad that it's it's almost across all the creative apps we have a, a similar look at least in regards to colors so uh, this is a this is a Genesis 8 character custom character this time this is not the default character this is a custom character with a bikini from out of touch i believe and hair from 3D universe it's short so it doesn't waft around which is important if ever you design a third person character uh, don't worry about the front at all because you're never going to see that or very rarely only are you going to see that <laughs> mostly what you're going to see is the back of the character so just make sure the back looks okay when you <laughs> when you line everything up and then then you're good so again with the if you have items parented or the character clothed like this make sure the top character is selected so if i select the pants or the bra then only that will be visible in unreal as i send it over so it needs to be the top thing that is um, that is selected and then i can go over again to edit sent to unreal this is going to take a little bit longer because of the hair again we can change the name i'm going to leave this at g8 f3 and just go hit accept so luckily we didn't get the message that i got during testing so many many times here and that was that no skeletal mesh could be found in the fbx which is super annoying i don't even know how to uh, how to get rid of that it just it, it turns out there was uh, some files that had mismatched and then the new engine came out today so it was all that kind of took care of that but i was struggling with that over the last couple of days so luckily this is something we can ignore no smoothing group information was found in this fbx so it's you know that's cool we can just go get rid of that so now it looks like we have the we have another folder down here we have the one that's the genesis 8 mail which is the one that we dealt with a moment ago i'll go and close that and we have another one which is this g8 f3 and that's the one that i just brought in and once again we have the uh, g8 f3 skeletal mesh here and i can go double click that just to apply the pose i need to do that and so once again this is um uh, this is uh do i even need to do that i don't actually remember do i need to do that no i don't forget it that was only for retargeting so i don't actually have to do that we can uh well, that's the one tab i should have really left open <laughs> of course let me go open that again so the only thing i believe i think that i'm not entirely sure about this but the only thing i have to do is go back into my third person character here Go back into the viewport and i think all i need to do now is select a different skeletal mesh shall we try it out kids let's do it g8f let's see if that works yes look at that that works so i don't have to do anything else now we have the same character she the pose doesn't quite fit the the kind of the idle pose she doesn't have that big arms but i'm sure that's something we can we can change so yes that's the only thing that needed to happen only because they share they share the same uh, rigging i guess so compile and save uh, go play the level now we have genesis 8 female running around in the level and the idle pose aside it's working pretty well 
Yeah, so this retargeting thing that only has to be done once, and then you can just bring in any number of characters. And if I work out how to make this change in code, that I can, you know, map this to a button, that I press a button and then the character changes. That is kind of, that's the next challenge for me. That if I had two characters in here and I like to change between them, that is kind of the, that is the idea. So in that case, then going forward, you could have 20 characters in there, a little bit like in Fortnite, and you can just pick whichever one you want. So you can go and park your character where you want them, uh, frame up the scene with the camera later, and just go and uh, press a few buttons to toggle through poses. That's my idea. And that could be, that could just be, you know, could be made so much easier. The hair, I don't know, the, the hair, the materials, I don't think they're quite perfect, but that's just a matter of tweaking. So, I mean, in principle, this works. And I think that is just so exciting. I really um, find that amazing. Yeah, the jumping animations, you can put all kinds of animations in there. I'm just not at that level of knowledge where I can do that yet. But this is good. This is this is very nice. I'm chuffed. I'm very pleased with that. And it looks like it's worked flawlessly in this whole demonstration. So I'm really glad about that. I'll see. I'm going to record this as a tidier, more cohesive tutorial with proper zooms in and uh, over the next few days. But yeah, this is something that is, um, yeah, that's that's nice. There's one other thing I'm just seeing here. We can adjust that. Her toes kind of dig into the ground a little bit. I don't know if that's just on the block here. Now it looks like it's everywhere. So um, that is something we can we can adjust in the third person blueprint there that we've just been in here. That so I can just go and and select the character here, and then I can go and move her up so it's not like in whoops not quite that much actually <laughs> it's not quite like in blender she doesn't line up with the with the bottom of the grid here but she does line up whoops with uh, the bottom of the capsule here so i suppose she's just a little bit further down than she should be and i think if we go and turn snapping off maybe make that 96 something like that see if that works any better 97 was the default yeah it could probably be a little bit more but the more the higher you move her the the more of a gap there is between her touching the floor and you know if you make it too high then the character hovers so i got his mom somebody like that leave that as it is for now with shoes, it's not going to really be that noticeable anyway. So shoes are always going to dig into the ground a little bit. Uh, no, the animations, Tykin, they come with Unreal Engine. So those are starter animations. They can, they were, I believe, brought in originally from Mixamo. So Mixamo have tons of these animations, literally all small snippets and small little blocks. And they've made lots of their animations available for free on the Unreal Marketplace. And this comes all... Uh, bundled with Unreal Engine. So when you create that starter template, third person starter template, all that is hooked up for you, which is great. They do other templates. They have one which is a, a shooter template in which your character actually holds a gun and the mechanism of firing a gun is also uh, is also enabled and it just fires little balls which you can replace with uh, actual bullets and all that. So it's very well done the way they've, they've made that um, the, kind of the, the way they they add a bit of pizzazz to even the demo levels is nice. Unlike Unity, which basically gives you a white level with not even a plane in it. I'm sure there is a way around it, but it's just, you know, it's just a difference. So I'm thinking let's go and save the whole thing here, actually. And uh, this is my, my dead zones of my joystick here. They are, uh, they are dead, so sometimes I have to do this <laughs> in order for that to happen. I'm going to bring in one of the Sinti scenes and let's try and walk around the farm or the office with that character and then I'm all the meadow either the meadow or or a Sinti scene what do you think what's what's your preference uh, kind of a cartoony background scene like a farm with sprinklers and all or more like a meadow scene I suppose the Genesis characters they're a bit more photorealistic so I suppose a photorealistic background would would work there I suppose the pose when you change the character, it, that I think that's just so that it looks a bit nicer. Um, 
The meadow? Let's do the meadow, Christina, no problem. Yes, I think they, they put the character in a pose just because it looks a bit more natural. If you look at characters in the A or the T pose, that always looks a bit... Um, it looks static, I suppose, if, if they don't move. So they might as well apply something like a subtle uh, breathing animation. I think that's why they do it. Some games are clever when it takes a while for, for the new character to load. The character goes into something where you don't see the loading process. Like in Fortnite, when you go into one of the phone booths to get changed into a henchman, that is a good example. The phone, you can see the character go in, the door closes, the booth then turns opaque, so something comes down, then the character changes, which is only going to be a pop, or maybe not all text, just pop in at the same time, and then the changed character emerges that's that's how they do that so the meadow scene let's do that uh, I'll go close this down and I'll add the meadow to this which I have to do in my unreal launcher unreal engine in my library and the meadow is just such a cool thing I think it's just called meadow and I hope we can just their meadow environment set free for july so this thing is free much like games unreal give you content every month for free and the products are unbelievable so this month we have a canyon scene which is unbelievable and this meadow scene here i'll go and just add that to my project which i believe was called das 6 i think <laughs> add to project content management made easy i believe mine's already downloaded so i don't have to download 2.6 gigabytes I think it just literally just copies it over to my project. That is how you have to deal with uh, content. There we go. Perfect. Verifying that's cool. It's just, it just copied it over. That's nice. Yes, Rod, where are you? Are you here or are you at Colin's place? <laughs> or are you even in the stream still? Hey, excellent. Oh, I see. I see. Good stuff. <laughs> there we go. You're bouncing back and forth. I like it. So that has now copied the files I need to my Unreal project here, which should be in here somewhere. Meadow environment set. I like it. Let's see what's in it. It usually comes with its own maps folder. Meadow environment set shared assets. Now, maybe just in the maps here. There we go. There's environment and there's another environment. Hmm. Overview and not overview. So overview maps are just the whatever assets are in there nicely laid out if you look at that you can see what you can use to build your own level and usually they also come with a little demo level where the developers put everything into kind of a cohesive scene and you can use that but you don't have to it's just an example of what you can make with that and i'll just go and load that and in a moment i'm gonna maybe go and uh, adjust it so that this is going to be the default level when i load my project save selected yes please it's a time-consuming process, this. <laughs> so rewarding and worth it, though. <laughs> Always, I like it. <laughs> if Colin is still online when I'm going offline, perhaps I can rate Colin. That'd be a nice idea. If he's on Twitch, indeed. I don't actually know Colin. <laughs> I, must, I must be absolutely honest. Oh, he's on YouTube. Ah, oh, Kidog. I can't rate him. I don't know if they're going to in, uh, introduce this rating feature once in YouTube. I've heard with Mixer closing, I've heard so many discussions about how the Mixer closure has impacted the streaming market share plays. And while Twitch is the number one in the market, YouTube is this sleeping giant. So any footage they reckon that ends up on any platform, these, these streaming platforms, including Twitch, they usually don't want to deal with storing footage. So your stream is online for two weeks for affiliates and partners, it's two months, but then it just auto disappears. So you don't have to worry about clearing that out. They just recognize that it is about the moment. It's about the here and now. It's not about what you did last year because YouTube are so good at dealing with that. It's a huge infrastructure that that costs. And uh, many of these streaming platforms make it easy for you to share your content over to YouTube. And um, uh, that is why they don't want to deal with storage. It's the storage overhead. They don't want to do that. But YouTube is great at that. And now the thing was YouTube adds these excellent streaming features and insiders reckon that pretty soon there's not going to be 
a need for anyone to go elsewhere. I mean, what I really enjoy about the streaming to YouTube is that I don't have to worry about what happens to my footage. It goes to YouTube, it stays on YouTube. With stream is over, it gets turned into a video that can be rewatched, chopped up into bits, and it stays on one platform. I really enjoy that. And it can start generating passive income a minute, like, literally after it's it's gone live. So that's that's really nice. But hey, so there, so yeah, just to finish that train of thought there, the people reckon that YouTube is the sleeping giant of streaming platforms that people don't quite take quite seriously because their streaming features are only a few years old and they are bringing in such a massive audience uh, over time continuously rather than on the live stream. They, this, this thing kind of generates views as the video just sits there. And that's what people find really fun, uh, really fantastic. It is a good advantage, absolutely. The new player, by the way, is something called Trovo. I don't know if you've heard of that yet, but Trovo is a streaming platform by Tencent. And they're the Chinese guys who've bought a large stake in Epic. And they're currently going out of their way to pay for streamers to stream on their platform and reach a certain amount of... Um, views and uh, they literally reward you financially if you stream on trovo they find they reward you financially which is kind of it's kind of exciting but they're very small so viewing figures aren't aren't quite there yet uh, i'm going to set up my meadow level as the ex as the default level so that's under uh, project settings edit project settings and then it's under maps and modes there's these two things here editor startup map and game default map and that's currently set to the third person example map i'm going to go and set that to the meadow environment set map both for the game and for the editor in our case it's just for the editor that's important but the uh, this would be the default map when you build and distribute your game from what i understand is there anything i need to save or is that is that it i think that might be it so next time i open this the meadow will come up in the meadow we also need a player start Let's see if we have one already if only I could type, hey? No, we don't. Player start. Sorry, this is up here in the world outliner. I was looking for something called player start, but that's not in here. And we can drop that in. This is it. You can also search for that in the actors classes here. So a player start is where if I were to play my game, my player gets dropped in, usually from a height. So this is often why you see things falling into the world so that they don't intersect with geometry at the floor level. So if I now go and play this, my game mode is still the same and my character has now fallen into play, which is, you know, which is nice. So that's fairly easy. So her, her feet are still sinking into the ground here. I think I'm not going to worry about that. But yeah, she could do with being lifted up a little bit. And look at that, we've got the camera, we've got the, um, oh, that's my cursor. <laughs> Sorry, I thought this is my, this is a camera effect uh, called, what's that called? Again, the aberration, the aberration effect. When you look into a uh, light source, let's see if we can find a light source somewhere here, I guess. You sometimes get this little lens effect there. Gorma, my man! Hello, hello! So nice to see you! No walking further than here. These are just roving hills here. They are, they're looking good for the background. But our character mustn't go and walk over here. Very important. Well, great! Look at that! Das character rendered in 60 frames a second, live. And it really didn't take us all that long. This was just over an hour. Oh my goodness, this, you can fall through here. Mustn't look too closely. This is just a demo level. You can build your own level out of these assets. Oh, can we go back up here? Can we? We, we may not be able to do that. Ah, yeah, just about. Just about. That's nice. Gorma and Christina, both of you are from Germany. That's really cool. I love it. <laughs> it's like the German congregation, the international congregation here. Uh, yeah, she walks on water. Don't, let's not worry about that. 
I haven't learned how to change that yet. I have learned something else, and that is something I'm, I need to write another little article about, how to make these little windmills spin around in the Sinti scene. They have these little windmills that go and and supposed to spin around, and by default they don't spin around. I'd like to try something else. I'd like to, this is the default sky, I think that comes with the scene, which is already great, but I would like to use our ultra dynamic sky from Everett Gunther. Now that we know a little bit about how to make that work, Christina and I learned that in the last stream, the hard way, by brute forcing parameters into slots and eventually something good came out. So <laughs> that was good. I'd like to add that to the scene and see if I can make that, make that work. But I'm quite pleased with what we've achieved so far. That's really exciting. So exciting. So for this to work, uh, I need to do several things. One is that I need to remove all references of the current sky and lights in my scene. So I'm going to go and look for light for sky. So there's sky and fog, light, skylight, and blueprint for the skylight. So I'm going to go and delete that and the lights and that and that. That's one thing. Any lights in the scene? There are a meadow environment set map. We've got the light mass importance volume. Great. Let's get rid of that. The light source and the whole lights folder, in fact, is now also gone. There's lights, sky, and atmosphere. So sky, there's nothing left for sky, but at Atmosphere. So we've got the atmospheric fog. So let's get rid of the fog as well. And that now has this kind of bland look. So we don't really have, uh, we don't have a, we don't have good environment anymore. There's still some kind of fog in here. So let's go if we can see if there's any more fog in here. Yeah, there we go. Exponential height fog. So we want to get rid of that as well. And now we have nothing in our scene anymore. That's cool. That's perfect. I think we can go and get rid of this as well, can we? No. There. Gonski. So there's no more sky. There's no more nothing in here. Oops. It's all black. And that's perfect because we're just going to go and replace the thing with our own also from the, from the asset library. Go back to my launcher here. Into my library. Madness Middles! Hello, hello! Good afternoon. Very good to see you. We're making progress with the Unreal Engine. Um, what was that called? Ultra Dynamic Sky. Ha ha. And very friendly the way we can add it. Just add it to the project. So cool. Dash 6. Add to project. Oh, this is exciting. And that was at 200 megabytes. That was not so much. Let's go back here. And there it is, Ultra Dynamic Sky. Now I remember this was a blueprint that we just add to our scene. I, I'm, I, there must be a way to do this, but I haven't found how to yet. Let me go and close all these things down. So if I drop something into the viewport like that, it's it's a bit like with other things that have a content browser, where I drop it, that's where it'll be. That's not necessarily the middle of the scene. That could be anywhere in the scene. And that makes my level building life a lot easier. But I wonder if there's a way that I could do it so that it ends up in the middle of the scene. So I can see that on the location down here where that would be. I've tried to put that just in here, but it says invalid drag and drop operation. Drag into viewport must be the viewport. So I could just put that in here and hope it'll be at a good place. Or I can just go and manually tweak the location. Make that zero, zero, and perhaps not, the Z is probably not as not good as at zero. Perhaps I'm gonna put that like a hundred or something so it's a little bit above the ground. But yeah, <laughs> indeed, Skyrim X, that's the one. <laughs> and so now we have different sky in the game. Yeah. I could be the gaming grandpa. What do you think? People call me grandpa now on YouTube. Unbelievable. <laughs> it is just, what is the world coming to? Crazy stuff. So, um, Christina, do you remember how we, how we did that last time? 
how we did anything. I think there was something about the light that had to be rebuilt. Probably. There's also something along the lines of basic controls. Oh yeah, time of day. There we go. If we make it uh, 12 o'clock, it should be brighter. Or if we make it 2 in the morning, it should be dark again with the sky coming out. That's nice. So maybe we'll make it, uh, I don't know, 1400 military time. Animate the time of day. Maybe we'll do that next time. See what happens when we go play. Huh. Skyrim. All right. This does look like that camera effect. It is actually just my cursor, so. Doesn't look as dramatic as we had it before the sky, but I think that's there's something else in the scene that I haven't quite found yet. <laughs> And we can make it dark, of course, as well. And put auroras in. I'd love to put auroras in. Let's try that. Let's put ultra dynamic sky. Uh, let's put auroras into this. Cloud appearance. There we go. Cloud wisp opacity. Uh, make it more wispy. There we go. Nice one. Cloud speed, and oh, we wanted to make it a bit faster. Whoa, there we go. Yes, look at that. Faster clouds. Cloud direction. Make it the, go the other way. Uh, no, maybe three. Well, let's let's try ninety. Oh, there we go. Different cloud direction. Very nice. Whoops. Oh dear. That was the clearly the wrong button <laughs> yeah now the clouds go the other way i'm god i have control over the world this is crazy i press zero the clouds go the other way oh my god that's awesome i love that already i love the slightly faster clouds as well i think so too christina let's try and rebuild the lighting in a minute there's this. I'm gonna go and put the put the auroras back on because I really like that. Aurora intensity. Use auroras, yes. Aurora intensity one. And then there's aurora speed as well. Very cool. And I suppose that only really comes out when we use the when we look at it slightly later in the evening. Perhaps 2200. Look at that. Oh, that is so cool, isn't it? Oh, come on, that is just so much fun. And we can make the viewport um, big. G, by the way, if ever you select something that has this outline around it, G on the keyboard will remove all those and you get a, get a good preview of your scene in full screen. F11 to make it full screen and G to switch off the overlays. I believe game mode, they call it. I mean, that is just cool. Let's rebuild the lighting. I believe build. Build lighting only. Yes. <laughs> I totally understand that, Christina. And I'm like that as well. Nevertheless, I'm always super, super grateful for all the tips you give me. When you say, try this, try that. If, as, as long as I know where that is, I'm super happy to try it out. Sometimes I don't know where it is, or it's over my head. I do also totally admit that. Lighting build complete. No portents volume found. Well, that's not good, is it? Maybe we need to add one. I don't actually know what that is. What is an importance volume? Got to be, got to be important. I can see that rebuilding the light has had an effect on the grass. The grass was a little bit lighter a minute ago. That's the channel, isn't it? This this is the new 24-7 channel. This is just quality material for 3D shenanigans, 24-7 loop, or whichever, whichever way we go. I love to do it on Twitch, but the trouble with Twitch is the only reason why I don't want to do the 24-7 channel on Twitch is the chat, because the chat on Twitch sucks so much that when the moment you refresh your web interface, it just, you know, it just goes... 
uh, the chat's gone. And you think, what? No, that's terrible. We will make it work. So that way I can't then see if someone's left a message overnight or whatnot. So yeah, YouTube does that better. <laughs> Mixer used to do that really well. Twitch would be great because the music I'm going to play is cleared on Twitch and on my main YouTube channel. If I were to do this on a second channel, I have to pay again for clearance. But hey, it's one of those things. Yeah, importance volume. I don't really know what they mean. I mean, if it's if it's easy, we can we can always have a look for one. Import light mass importance volume. Shall we just drop one in and see what happens? What's the worst thing that can happen? Light mass importance volume. I'm sure there was one in there, and I have neglected it. I might just put that back in the in the middle here. Zero zero, and. Z is actually up. I like that. <laughs> Z for me, Z is also up. So I'm kind of with with Blender and Carrara there, and Unreal Engine does that as well. I like that. So Z is up, and we're going to put that at maybe 200, and maybe we'll build the light again. I mean, I don't know what the what the advantages of a light mass importance volume are, but hey, let's find out. Mixer's chat was so good. Yes, absolutely. And while I can while I can tweak the Twitch chat to a certain extent, I can use a standalone chat bot. So if someone does leave a message, I will be able to read that, but only I and no one else. And that's not, you know, that's not good. Ooh, map check found some issues. Map check, tell us what are the issues? Oh, okay. Large actor receives pre-shadow and will cause an extreme performance hit unless B cast dynamic shadow is set to false. Yeah, no, I can see that. We should set B cast dynamic shadows to false. On all these actors, in fact. <laughs> There's gotta be a better way to do this. B cast dynamic shadows. Tell you what, I'm in for the performance boost. That's totally cool with me. I haven't quite worked out the, the whole navigational control, especially with one hand. <laughs> but you know, I mean, performance hit or not, I'm kind of pleased about this. Oops. That is something, especially with the trackball, that re that really needs to be practiced. I'm so glad I've got my my gamepad. Whoops. <laughs> that is not so good, is it? Um, F focuses you on something. For whatever you select, press F. That is like pressing the zero on the numpad, and then Alt left click will rotate around it if you don't hold alt down it'll be it'll just turn the camera as if it was on a gimbal and move it back and forth with the with the scrolly mouse wheel hold down the scroll wheel and then left click that will move your camera in position so up down left right and then i believe right click and uh and drag is that the same as left click and drag it is similar not quite the same right click and drag is literally gimbal without moving and left click and drag is look left right but also move forward and back and then there's also how fast you move they can they can set that as well with this property here camera speed i believe this is all a bit you know <laughs> one day i'll work it out i'm sure for now let's go grab my control pad back and see what we can what we can discover in the night sky Uh, Gorma, yes, it is relatively easy. So there is a plugin. Yeah, exactly. We, we talked about this earlier. I'm going to make a more cohesive YouTube video about this, about how to use it. So um, it's something from the Unreal Marketplace, a plugin called DAS to Unreal. And the man who's developed it is David Vothanel or Vothanel. And 
he has so it's, it's available for purchase on the unreal marketplace for 40 bucks but and it's worth it i think for the 30 or 40 bucks i think it's worth it for the fact that the menus are actually working and you know great amount of work has probably gone into making this happen and um he has just made this available on a GitHub repository on DAS's official GitHub repository. And I believe they're in the process of doing something. We don't know the details, but I wouldn't be surprised if this exact plugin is going to come to either the DAS store for a fee or as a free version uh, in the coming weeks or months. I mean, this morning they've surprised us with the arrival of Blender bridges and Cinema 4D bridges and all that for free and based on open source licenses, which is kind of a <gasps> das. What's next? Community involvement? Can we now submit a pull request and say, hey, I've, I've got a suggestion and they write back, oh, thank you, Jay. That's awesome. We'll integrate that into the master branch. Really? Is that where we're going? This would be like a beautiful world one can dream hey one can dream you don't know times change and it looks like das's direction is kind of changing a little bit i have a feeling and this is pure speculation on my part i have a feeling it has to do with the fact that potentially das studio 4 as it is can't really be developed forward anymore i think they can maintain the current version with very minor additions for maybe another few years but there will be the point where they won't be able to build something with the Qt4 framework anymore. That is kind of my worry. And I suppose they're at this crossroad as to where, where, where are we going in the future? Are we going to build DAS Studio from scratch? Are we going to build all these features again in something like DAS Studio 5 from scratch? That might not be feasible or would require a lot of resources to make that happen. Uh, or are we going to go and just stick with something that we have or, or we build something much much slimmer that allows us to load content and then essentially export it and let other engines deal with what you really want to do with it be that unreal or be that blender or whatever you want to use the content in and just make content export easy and have a standalone tool for that just in case that studio 4 will stop working at one point so one of those things No, I don't think so. Actually, it's very true, uh, Gorma. There's a guy on my uh, Discord server, Brian, and he was asking the lazy artist, and he actually kindly asked Das and said, could I have a look at the Das source code, the Das Studio source code? And they declined. They said, no, we can't give you that. We can't give you access for that because there's some other closed source licenses that they need to acknowledge. And that, that's probably the reason why they can't, um, why they can't make, it, make the whole thing open source might be different if they were to write something from scratch. Woo, Rod, round of applause for you. I'm so glad that the aircon is working again. Oh, that is good. Let me make it daylight again. Time of day is 10 o'clock. We'll make it make it two in the eve, two in the night, actually. That's also nice. Do you know, actually, while we're here, I'd like to animate the time of day. Let's do that. animate the time of day now i can actually see it animating here full day night cycle what happens if i make this faster is that going faster now or slower I, it doesn't really seem to make a difference if i say animate the time of day you can set the sunrise and the sunset this is this is very nice I was hoping we can make it a bit faster, but that's also okay. Let's let's watch the sunrise. Let's make it so the sunrise is apparently at 6 a.m. So let's make it 5.30 <laughs> and then start animating the day from here. See what that looks like. And let's see where the sun might might rise, shall we? <laughs> that is really good news. Yes, but I suppose the source code for the bridges that they're starting to write from scratch, they can make that open source. It's a little bit like uh, what some plugin developers do on WordPress. They say, well, if I put something on the WordPress repository for it to be uh, 
kind of a, a plugin that's included with their repository it has to have the same license as wordpress but then if i wanted to give premium features i can then ask people to click a link and then install that themselves and sunrise ladies and gentlemen that's not bad is it Yes, diffeomorphic. I, I totally agree, Christina. This it's very difficult to get something that works that well. I wasn't that impressed with the current Teleblender four version, but diffeomorphic. My goodness, I was very impressed. Just the the whole like not just the end result. It's always you know that's that's one part. But how do you integrate that into the software? How easy do you make that for people to to get one thing into another? And how many hoops do you have to jump through? And diffeomorphic, my goodness, he did such a good job there, uh, integrating that into that side menu. Absolutely killer, killer integration. Really love that. I might make a video on that as well how to do that i've just worked out how to do this and uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um just practice that i need to put in there but yes that was my favorite implementation as well teleblender overloaded with details i found in the das section and um i have to kind of jump through a hoop to make it appear in blender works technically works not happy with the setting for the bump for the skin but still very um it's it's possible i thought that was that was awesome but i tried that first when i tried the diffeomorphic one i was thinking oh dude you have spent a lot of time on that project so i always appreciate that when you see that the that the roughness on the edges is, is much smoother you know when you when somebody's really gone to town and said yeah this isn't elegant this needs to be a little bit better you know look at the details that's that's nice so yeah diffeomorphic reset switch do you know what um my thing with air cons was always that when i found that sometimes when it doesn't spring on i have to literally physically drain that little pipe that's supposed to auto drain itself and get the condensation run off sometimes you have to just go and have a big syringe i've got a lot of big syringes around here and i can just go literally empty that little tank and then it, it kind of flows by itself thank you joe i'm glad you like it I'm very impressed myself. And again, if we were to go and if we wanted to use a different character now, I mean, again, I haven't found out how to do this in in um, code yet, but I just go to blueprints, third person character. It's actually still open here. And uh, whoops, what did I do? Oh my God, don't do that. Oh, there was just a... Uh, uh, there we go perfect if I select that mesh and uh, stop playing it change it to a different mesh like the Genesis 8 male character all I have to do is compile so I suppose we'd have two separate blueprints one for the man one for the woman or one blueprint per character and then I can say play different guy what the that was amazing both of them not wearing much but you can just put any amount of clothing on them and then uh, bring it across i also i did have issues if there's bones that have been named the same like in the head if you have a if you have hair and you in a hair prop and uses the same bone naming conventions than something that's already on the character i think the bridge is not happy with that or probably more the fbx isn't happy with that the moment you import the fbx into unreal engine it goes and eh, can't do that so there let's wait for sunrise let's walk through the plains until we have sunrise to finish this off i don't know why this isn't changing the time of day oh because i haven't ticked it duh that is why <laughs> That is why. Animate time of day. Totally forgot to put that on. 
So let's put that to something like 5.30 so we can see the sunrise. That's why that didn't work. Let's try that again. It's the night. Let's let's do sunrise with you. Come on. I want to see it go brighter. <laughs> Me too, Christina. Me too. I need that as WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG. Is that is that a word that we still use? <laughs> I don't remember. Sun. Sun! There it is. It's rising! Look at it! The auroras are still there I'm on this alien planet and I don't know what's going on. I, I only have a little square to walk through and there's trees and when the trees go stop, there's this massive ravine and I don't know what's happening. And then the sun is rising. Very cool. Ah. That is nice. Use that in real-time animations. And I do too, Christina. I just haven't heard it for a while. The stuff you can do and rendering time zero it's real time and this is something I, I can just I just need to remind myself of that you know however complicated Unreal Engine might be it's real time it's not control R or F12 wait two minutes and then you go yeah I think I need to change the lighting times that by 9000 to have an animation just click record an OBS and it's it's yours yours to keep Ha, oh, that is so cool. It does, doesn't it? Oh, Christina, this is just so cool. I can't wait to make just 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 animations with that. That'd be ideal for that, whatever it's going to be, wherever it's going to be, that 24-hour channel. Sinti assets, by the way, Christina, I'm also going to put that on the Trello board for, the, for 3D scrutiny. That's another good thing to review. Things like this as well, literally the Unreal assets, how easy it is to build a level with that. That's another thing I want to try out. How easy is it to look at the, look at the assets and then assemble them into something, that, a level that you want to build yourself? Ah. Rot, no render time. Look at it. It's rendering now. Uh. It's crazy, isn't it? There's so much more to explore in Unreal Engine, and I hope I can do this. <laughs> I can hope I can do this with you. Explore this and you know, see what else we can come up with and make funky things. Thank you so much for your resubscription. I'm glad you guys can still see me. I'm gonna say good night if actually my stream deck wants to work which it has decided not to do anymore. Crazy man. Major network issue. Oh, come on. I can't go to the titles, I'm afraid. <laughs> there we go, I think I can do it now, I can do it now. My friends, thank you so much for dropping by. I'll be back with game streams as well uh, soon. Uh, either later this week or early next week at 10 in the morning on YouTube and then I'll do that might not be five or six or seven days a week but certainly regularly I'm trying to get, get us going again because COVID hasn't quite stopped yet I really don't know when it is ever going to stop uh, but you know I'll, I'll be I'll be there we can hang we can chill we can shoot the breeze and in the afternoon we shall have more looks at this fantastic thing here which is the Unreal Engine awesome guys have a wonderful night and I'll see you soon bye bye